Let's discuss MicroStrategy co-founder and executive chairman, Michael Saylor. Michael, great to have you back on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, Martin. All right, so you're, we're, we're also coming off the heels of MicroStrategy's earnings after the bell yesterday. Uh, I do want to start there. You did report a loss, which was a surprise to the street, but it's tied to, it was this digital asset impairment losses, tied to the way that Bitcoin and losses in Bitcoin are, are accounted for. Um, walk me through, with paper losses now hitting something like $1.3 billion, does this change your strategy around Bitcoin and Bitcoin acquisition? Uh, no, it doesn't change our strategy. I mean, the losses are a function of the uh, indefinite and tangible accounting treatment. And of course, an auspicious development in the industry is that FASB's uh, taken a position that they're going to move toward fair value accounting. So eventually, uh, we'll be able to mark our uh, Bitcoin assets to market. We're enthusiastic about that. Uh, MicroStrategy is a way to invest in the digital transformation of money. And we're a gateway to the macro and crypto economy, allowing investors to either go short, go long, or trade the volatility. So our strategy is to buy and hold Bitcoin. And the key for us is to be consistent, transparent, and responsible in pursuit of that strategy. And we're unique in that regard. Yeah. Uh, that being said, you did sell some Bitcoin. I realized tax loss harvesting at the end of last year. Would you plan to sell more if need be? Well, we, uh, we're always considering ways that we can take advantage of this multi-billion dollar asset. And as you know, there's volatility and there's some unique tax treatment. So in that case, we were able to uh, generate a like a $34 million tax loss and we were able to carry it back against taxable gains. You know, we look forward and, and from time to time we may see opportunities, but but we're fairly prudent and responsible in considering those things. Let's talk a little bit about tech because MicroStrategy is really essentially two companies in one. Uh, holding the Bitcoin, which we'll talk more about in just a moment, but also uh, business intelligent enterprise software company as well. Continuing to see some resilience in that part of the business. One of the things we've discussed in the past is how the Bitcoin part of the business has helped to feed or even strengthen the business case for the software part of the business. Does that continue given the fact that Bitcoin, and I realize we've had this rally in the last couple of weeks, but it's down so dramatically from the highs just less than a year and a half ago. Well, it's been great for our company. Our employee turnover is at an all-time low. So I think it's good It's good for our shareholders. Uh, they've uh, enjoyed great returns. It's great for the employees. It's great for the customers. Uh, ultimately, the, the big idea here is that money is technology that allows us to transfer economic energy through time and space. And we're seeing and living through a digital transformation of money. Everybody wants to move assets at the speed of light, friction-free, 24-7, 365. MicroStrategy's Bitcoin strategy is just a way to invest in that. And the enthusiasm over Bitcoin is really billions of people on the planet that want to move their money faster and more frequently. And they're... they're uh, they're uh, chafing at the restrictions of the 20th century analog finance economy. So how are you continuing to propel that argument and potentially monetize it at MicroStrategy? And I ask that because I know you, you stepped aside as CEO last year, and part of the reason was to be able to focus more on this type of integration and, and on this type of new concept. The most exciting thing going on right now in the in the digital monetary world is Lightning. Lightning is a layer two open protocol for moving Bitcoin transactions in a split second for a fraction of a penny. In essence, Lightning is money over IP. And if you think about the world uh, as it changed after TCP IP and moving data over IP and then voice over IP, uh, Lightning promises to allow millions of companies uh, to provide transactions in real time with billions of consumers. MicroStrategy is actually developing MicroStrategy Lightning, our own enterprise Lightning offering. And uh, we're going to allow uh, CMOs uh, to offer Lightning rewards or Bitcoin rewards like a universal frequent flyer program to hundreds of thousands or millions of their customers, all of their employees, all of their prospects at the speed of light off of a website. And uh, so we're very enthusiastic about that. And you're betting there's demand for this. Yeah, you know, like right now, uh, companies spend billions of dollars on digital marketing. They give it to Google, they give it to Facebook, and they spend that money on ads in order to get people to come to their website. 
what if you could just give the billions of dollars in money directly to your customers and your prospects and you cut out the advertising? It might create a much less toxic, much more constructive environment. To do it, you need micro payments. You need to be able to move money at the speed of light, friction free. You can't do it with uh, 20th century credit cards. They're too expensive. They're too slow. They're too kludgy. There's too much friction. So what Bitcoin offers is micro transactions that can fundamentally change the way you market, change the way you build your products. And of course, you know, if you live in Africa or South America and it's Saturday afternoon, you know, the banking system is not working for you. Right. Bitcoin and Lightning is is a, a monetary system that works for the entire world and never gets turned off. Yeah. So, so what do you say when Charlie Munger from Berkshire Hathaway early this week publishes an op ed in the uh, Wall Street Journal and says, quote unquote, a cryptocurrency is not a currency, not a commodity, not a security. Instead, it's a gambling contract with a nearly 100 percent edge for the house entered into a country where gambling contracts are traditionally regulated only by states that complete, compete in laxity. And obviously, the U.S. should now enact a new federal law that prevents this from happening. Well, his criticisms of crypto aren't totally off. There are 10,000 crypto tokens which are gambling, and I sympathize with it on that matter. But uh, Charlie and the other critics, they're members of the Western elite, and they're continually prodded for an opinion on Bitcoin, and they haven't had the time to study it. If, uh, if he was a business leader in South America or Africa or Asia, and he spent 100 hours studying the problem, he would be more bullish on Bitcoin than I am. Uh, Lebanon, Argentina, Sri Lanka, Nigeria, Venezuela, they all illustrate the plight of the common man, and there's no solution better than Bitcoin. So I, I really think that you know the Western elites, they haven't had the time to study it. But I've never really met someone with an incentive living in the rest of the world that spent some time to think about it that wasn't enthusiastic about Bitcoin. Uh, that being said, it certainly seems like everyone's taking the time right now to study the implosion of the cryptocurrency space overall in general that we've seen over the past year and certainly marked by uh, the situation with Sam Bankman-Fried and FTX and Alameda just a couple of months ago. It's been a black eye on the, on the industry more broadly. I want to get your thoughts on that and what it means in terms of potential regulation, at least here in the U.S., and whether you now see that painted with a very broad, bush, broad, broad brush that will include Bitcoin. You know, the crypto meltdown was, uh, it, it's painful in the short term, but it's necessary over the long term for the industry to grow up. Uh, this industry uh, has some good ideas, uh, like uh, digital currencies and assets moving at the speed of light uh, that are unstoppable and a digital commodity that can't be debased. And it also has a lot of entrepreneurs that implemented those good ideas in an irresponsible fashion. What it needs is adult supervision. It needs the Goldman Sachs and the Morgan Stanleys and the Black Rocks to come in the industry. It needs, it needs clear guidelines from Congress. It needs clear rules of the road from the SEC. This, uh, the crypto meltdown has punctuated uh, the problem, has educated everybody on, on it, but also it's, it's underscored the idea that it's time for the world to provide a constructive, uh, transparent framework for digital assets so that we can move the financial system out of the 20th century into the 21st century. Now, you, you do work with Silvergate Bank. Um, it's issued loans to MacroStrategy, which is your subsidiary that focuses on Bitcoin, collateralized by Bitcoin to buy more Bitcoin. Will you continue to do business with the bank, given the fact that, in addition to the headlines today, that it is in, in the midst of a, a U.S. fraud probe over the FTX Alameda dealings, um, we have seen what was essentially, based on filings, a, a run on that bank? I think they've handled themselves admirably, uh, given the stress of the situation. And, um, and yes, we will continue to do business with Silvergate. Uh, the, you know, the institutions that were, that were improperly constructed collapsed, the Alamedas, the FTXs, the, the Voyagers, the BlockFi's of the world. But in fact, uh, Silvergate was a responsible bank. They were able to meet their redemptions. And if you consider the loan terms we have with them, you know, we're, we're nearly 4x over collateralized by, you know, 25% loan to value, you know, and, uh, you know, the irresponsible crypto banks, we're doing under collateralized loans. So I think they do banking the right way in a responsible fashion, and they're a good citizen for the ecosystem. Michael Saylor, always appreciate, ha 
appreciate you coming on and your insights. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me.